Soup Zone started in 2003, and it was a, I was beginning to put a campaign together as an elected official. Every, every so often you run for office and you try to reach out to people. And a lot of times people in elected office have these annual signature events. And we were in the campaign committee, the group of friends who were talking about how we would structure this, that city council campaign, we were brainstorming, well, what kind of an event should we have? What would be the identity that would be something that we could not just have for that year, but maybe do again? And just in the middle of that conversation, which was going on in a lot of different meetings over a period of weeks, uh, one of our friends got sick. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And so she, so she was, she couldn't be in the meetings, and I made soup uh, to take to her, to her and her family because I just, I, I love to cook. As one and, does. As one does. That's that's what we do in right. community. Is when somebody needs help, we find a way to reach out. And so our friend was sick, and I took soup to her house, for her family and herself, and she was the person who was helping to figure out what this event would be. And she said, well, why don't we just make soup? You can just make soup in your kitchen and we can have people come over and, we, and maybe they'll help you with the campaign. And so that seemed like a fit. It was an easy thing to do and, and the right thing to do. And it was just, so from the beginning, it was about friends coming together to help each other and do something that will have a, a community foundation. So we still thought this, this, this community feeling of us making soup ourselves was, the, was, what, was one of the characteristics of the thing. So some people made brownies or cookies and other people's we, we, upper crust came along right at the beginning and donated bread, I think, for the, the second or third year and have every time since then. So the family of, of uh, makers and givers just kept growing. So uh, what happened is that we went to Davis Community Church and everybody brought their crock pots of soup. And so we had 65 crock pots of soup. We kept blowing the fuses out at Davis <laughs> Community there. Church. And, and, we, and in fact, it was so full, that, that, that wonderful space they have was yeah. so full that people couldn't even get to the line where the soups were, were set up. And we had, and we had it was just logistically a, a mess. And the year after that, we went out to Davis flight support at the Yellow County Airport. And again, people traipsed back and forth with crockpots. When we realized that we really couldn't do the crockpot stuff anymore, yeah. uh, we, we went to for friends that we'd, that we'd met over the years who run cafe restaurants. And a couple of people who are caterers, uh, and a couple, and only one or two people who are just home cooks, and we and we got uh, this this cadre of, we built a family yeah. of of donors uh, from the business community. Yeah. My name is attached to all that, but there's a team of people that has year after year after year volunteers. The the donors, that's a cadre of folks. The 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 people who make the soup is one group. The, there's a, there's a family of people who make contributions, dollar contributions, and that continues to grow and evolve. But a lot of the folks have done that for many, many years. And there's a group of people who, are, who volunteer, and it's kind of like a soups on, again it's, again, it's like a family, but they know they're gonna come. Uh, Kari Fry comes and, and uh, staffs this uh, credit card booth thing that the check-in table. Uh, Elizabeth Henderson always sets up the cookies and the salads, and she does it with great care and love, and and uh, decorates it in just the right way. And and uh, others do diff other different roles that they just know they're going to do every year. And Sudworks comes every year, so and the wineries. You know, so it is. So it's yes. So the the joy of this is that I get to use the status as an elected official to reach people and we all come together and, and uh, do this. Suicide Prevention with the recipient of Supervisor Don Saylor's 7th Annual Soup Son. Over $22,000 was raised to allow us to continue to provide crisis services to those in need. That year, our crisis line answered over 4,800 callers from people in distress. 
Supervisor Saylor recognized our 24-hour crisis line program and stepped up to help us continue this essential service. difference that Soupson made for Empower YOLO was there were a lot of people in the community who thought they knew what Empower YOLO does or thought they knew about all of our services, but the event gave us a chance to highlight all of the services and to let people see a complete picture of who we were as an agency. It brought us some new donors, but it brought us a lot more awareness in the community about the issues that we care about. started this as a campaign event. Yes. Well, that means that what we're trying to do is get people to come to an event and make campaign contributions that we can use to get the message out and to help be help do the election run. Right. But the, there was a there was a year when uh, one I wasn't running for office and two there was a a campaign finance uh, rule that I didn't have the capacity to raise money to put in the campaign account. But I wanted to have the event keep going because yeah. the event was fun and the event was, a, was people liked it and they would come. So I thought, well, well, let's do the event for somebody else. Let's do the event for a nonprofit. And that first year that we did the, the full on soups on, we chose Tuliomi. And Tuliomi is, a, is an organization that's been working in the, in the Blue Hills. Uh, over here in the western part of Yolo County to get the wilderness area designated. But we wanted to focus it on a, one part of their activity. So we asked about it and we, we figured out that, that what we'd want to do is support Tuliomi to take urban, urban kids to an outdoor experience uh, in the wilderness. Right. So that was our fundraising cause. And, we just, and, and it turned out that was a whole lot more fun than asking people to give money to a political campaign. They enjoyed it, yeah. and we we all felt that the the that the, the the purpose was was good. There's another thing that I, I really have to tell you, and that's that the whole idea of this is to build community. And my vision at the beginning was yeah, after that first Tuliomi experience, and we all went away in the next couple of days, saying, "Aha! That was that was that was really cool." We th I thought, well, what if the people who were involved with that nonprofit would participate next year to help another nonprofit? Maybe they would be interested in, in building a broader net. And so that, that's, and that has happened so that we now, every time we do this, uh, I see new connections happening and new, uh, new folk. And I wanted to always focus on a, a different kind of nonprofit, so the, the arts, services to children, food security. So the beneficiaries have been the food bank, Meals on Wheels, Foster and Kinship Care, Puda Creek Council. Every, every different groups and every one of the ways to think about it is I didn't want to have us do benefits year after year for one kind, for one benefit, one nonprofit or one kind of nonprofit. I wanted to touch all the segments, all the sectors of our community. The, 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 first, the first time we did uh, music at a Soupson event, it was Tom Moore, and it was at the Seegers house in South Davis. And Tom dressed up in his Elvis, Elvis impersonator. Elvis costume, oh God, I'd forgotten about that. <laughs> <laughs> so Tom did a solo uh, Elvis impersonation. <laughs> And that also was an aha. Oh, you know what? We could have a live performance as a part of this event. And uh, that, so Tom was, was, uh, was the archetype. And then over the years, we, uh, the musicians have just been superb. Custom Neon was one, and yeah. Hardwater, and Yolo Mambo. And, and one of the fun things about the Custom Neon event, when they, they performed at uh, Davis Community Meals, of course, Mary Lynn Tobin was a, was a part of that group and she was the, the minister at that church 
And when Custom Neon performed, there was an, another performer who was doing a little welcome music. David Hafter was doing Grateful Dead tunes with just acoustic guitar and his voice in the hallway as people came in. And David started playing with Custom Neon members. And out of that event came the band called Wealth of Nations, which has, of course, they're still around, yeah. and they, so that that's where they met was at that Soup Son event. Uh, when and so, so I I love that. Yeah. So little things like that. So I I really am looking forward to Mumbo Gumbo per performing. Well, you you have kind of a special relationship with that band or with members of that band. Well, especially with the with the Lauder family yeah. because they were for good friends and yeah. uh, idols. You know, they were pretty pretty amazing community members, yeah. and did their own multiple years of of hands around the world to support the El Roti, the Rutio Grande right. Sister City program and so the Mumbo Gumbo performed in all of those events over the years and so for Mumbo Gumbo to come and do this they see it as a as a back to the roots it's been an interesting journey for for uh, sponsors because you know the first few years it was Calling people up and trying to explain what this is about, and right. and uh, they and they and, and to, to invite people to participate, it, it it took a lot of of work to call people, and asking them for very little amounts of money, and 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 it just but over time that sort of built, and at this point, these the last few years uh, we we barely ask, and they say yes, of course. We planned on doing this, and so the, their donations are are on the way. So the the donors, I, I can't name them all be, because I'll miss somebody, but they've been around. Many of them donate every year, and they and what we are what we hope to do is that we start with uh, with a, some will, some will make a donation because it they're, they're part of the soups on family they plan on it and so the Clark Pacific and the University as uh, Cal UC Davis are, are in that category they simply want to participate Kaiser usually and Sutter Health those those folks usually come in uh, but some come for the cause uh, because they know oh, I yeah Davis Media Access I know them I like them they do good work and I want to support that and but the good news there is that once they're in for one cause, they experience the, the they, they do the soups on experience, yeah. and now they're ready to do it again the next year. Right. So the hope that I've had from the beginning is that we'll be able to continue to build this family of volunteers, this family of donors, and the family of, of providers of food and drink, and the families of and the musicians because musicians most mostly they're doing this less than they would normally uh, normally ask for yeah. and some of them most of them have donated the time so everybody's in it together and I, I did I mentioned the volunteer base and we we will will expect uh, I expect that we're going to have about 400 people at soups on on April 21st but we'll also have probably 75 volunteers. The Soups on funds that Acme Theatre Company received in 2020 sustained our organization through the COVID-19 lockdown. For over a year, we were unable to produce in-person theater, but the Soups on funding allowed us to pivot to creating theater on Zoom. We sustained and built relationships with youth, made new friends, and worked with youth and guest artists as far away as Massachusetts, Colorado, New York City, and the Philippines. Without Soups On, Acme would have gone on hiatus, and I'm not sure we would have been able to survive that loss of momentum. So one of the threads to all the Soups On efforts has been to to work to connect people, mm -hmm. to connect the fabric of our community, uh, for a mutual benefit and to to really find ways to have people bond together, to enjoy each other, right. to, to have this stronger sense of community. And this year in particular, that's been, that's such an important factor. We've, we've been isolated you know, for the past two years with the pandemic. We People have not built their, they've not been able to nurture their relationships with one another, to build new relationships 
to connect for a common purpose. You know, and there, we've, been, we've done so many things, don't get me wrong, to help each other through sure. the course of this pandemic. But that connecting tissue that an event like Soupson has, has been aimed at has really suffered. Mm -hmm. And throughout all this, Davis Media Access has built alternative mains of connecting people. Uh, you've, the, the Davis Media Access always has been, uh, at, 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 a, at its very best, a way to connect ideas, information, and people, and, and, and their, their sense of self, their, ass, their essential nature. Yeah. It's a voice, and it's a voice on whatever technology platform whatever informational platform it can be. So we, it, there's, there's really no more appropriate beneficiary of this year's Soups On than the organization Davis Media Access, which does the same thing that Soups On has always been intending to do mm -hmm. and does it so well. This Davis Media Access has done it so well for so many years, connecting community, providing people a place to go uh, for the essential nature of their spirits. That's why Davis Media Access is our beneficiary for 2022. Davis Media Access is an organization that uses technology and human ingenuity to help document our shared history. A nonprofit that helps other nonprofits, schools, local government, and ordinary citizens share information, build capacity, and foster transparency. This is Davis Media Access for DMA. Above all, DMA is a community center, a hands-on learning lab, a place where people meet. What happens when you can no longer do the things you normally do? That's a question that every person and every institution had to answer this past year. In the best of times, non-commercial community media reflects the interest and needs of the communities it serves. And in the worst of times, such as a year bookended by rampant racism and political divisiveness and a global pandemic, it becomes a lifeline, a way to get things done when nothing else is doable, and most critically, a way to communicate important, locally relevant information. When we closed the doors to the Media Center on March 13th, 2020, like everyone else, we thought it would just be for a short while. We couldn't anticipate the flood of calls from other nonprofits needing help taking their signature events virtual. We didn't know we'd be called upon to document numerous local marches, protests, and vigils around racial justice. And we had no idea that we'd lack access to our studios as we confronted producing the largest local election season we'd ever encountered. What do you do when what you do every day is completely disrupted? How do you navigate a vibrant community that thrives on interaction, being cut off from each other? You adapt. DMA's staff, board, and committed volunteers worked hard to meet these challenges by rapidly learning new skills that allowed us to continue serving the community. Public affairs programmers learned how to produce radio from home, keeping fresh content on KDRT 95.7 FM. We produced a year-long weekly report on COVID-19 news and developments in Yolo County, interviewing community leaders, elected officials, teachers, students, artists, and nonprofit leaders from across the county. Our music DJs kept music alive at a time when venues were shuttered and musicians out of work. Our staff explored and mastered a variety of platforms that let us produce high quality programs remotely. COVID-19 challenged many organizations to produce once live events in a safe and remote manner. DMA provided a suite of services to help them move events online. Like our fellow nonprofits and community-based organizations, this year has challenged us on every possible front. Long hours on Zoom, coupled with budget worries, concern for our own health as well as that of our community, took over at times. 
We're grateful to the City of Davis and the Davis Joint Unified School District for our long-term partnerships. We're grateful to our many volunteers and supporters for helping to create and sustain this organization in this most difficult of years. Unlike normal years, we don't have statistics about numbers of users and programs aired because this has not been a normal year. Over the past decade, the national media scene has driven home the importance of local, non-commercial, independent media. A handful of large corporations controls nearly all of the media in this country. The result is a homogenous perspective that sacrifices localism. In a time of separation and division, we're proud to say we've been a force for good in Yolo County and that we've built community in a time of crisis. Yeah, this is going to be one of the first events of this size since the pandemic. Right. And, and as you say, Autumn, we're going to be, we, we, we're, we're very cognizant of, of doing this event at this time. So we're, we've, we've shared that we want everyone vaccinated. We want them to, to have the negative test. But what we've really said most of all is whatever the public health orders are at that time, because right. we started the planning a couple of several months ago, not knowing if, if the event can actually even happen. Yeah. We're, 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 we're planning for a, a hopeful event. Right. Right. And so we're, we're watching the, the progression of, the, of, the, of COVID and we'll be ready. Uh, and, and much of it is outside and there will be clear ventilation and we'll be doing whatever is, the, is uh, in effect at the time. Right. And we really encourage everyone to be fully vaccinated and to, and to take advantage of the testing opportunities that we have here, thanks to Healthy Davis Together. Mm -hmm.